Today's topic is breaking down the Fifth Legion's design and law. Only poets can be true warriors. Huh? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to Way Pan. I'm Cal. And I'm Sunny. We'll be taking a look at pre and post heresy design as well as redesign. Within these segments, we'll be looking at design breakdown, design analysis, art, design versus law, and final notes. Let's get to it. Pre-heresy. Sunny, this is the standard armor for the 5th Legion. Tell me what you think. Well, there's not much information I can go off of this design. He looks pretty much just like all the other Legions of Stardis standard soldiers, just that he's got camo pattern on top and he looks like the modern day soldier if he were a space marine. And when you say that he just looks like the other Legion of Stardis, you mean design-wise with his yeah, armor? Yeah, like the, you know, the same square-like shapes, the vibe and grill for the helmet a uh, very standard look and the only thing I could get information from is probably the symbols on the knee pads other than skulls which is death and of course a hawk I guess this could be an aerial squad okay all right well I regret to inform you I have lied once again oh come on you you do it again yeah so this is before they met their primer right okay okay Sunny this is actually the standard getup of the fifth legion after they met their primer. That's much better. Like, there's a lot more going on here that we can talk about. A lot more character, you mean? Yes, exactly. So the carmine red and yellow gold accents paired with the rope and medallion accessories, as well as the ornamental patterning along the pauldron and belt, gives it an oriental look. I'm guessing there are East Asian influences in this legion. There might be. Yeah, and this helmet design is also by far the most unique of the legions of Stardis that we have seen thus far. It does break the standard mold of the visor and grill design and closer to, as I mentioned before, an East Asian design. You actually mentioned something else when we were talking about it. You said it kind of looks like a Power Ranger. Oh, yeah. I think just because <laughs> the helmet looks a lot like the Power Rangers. <laughs> yeah, with the little eyes. The, the Super sharp. Sentai stuff. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But taking that more seriously for a moment, do you think that that gives certain vibes off about this Legion? Yeah, I think they do give off a bit of a heroic essence, especially with a lot of the use of white. Especially, yeah. Well, white is... Is the color psychology of that is quite a bit different, but we'll wait to the analysis yeah. to explain that. All right. Would you like to see the standard for other guys so that people know that I'm not giving you the bum drum? I'm yep. telling you the... Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's take a look. Sunny, here they are as a group. Tell me what you think of them. So two of them look a lot like your standard design like the previous one. Yep. But the other two actually look quite unique. So I'm thinking like the Terminators usually signify someone special, yeah, special okay. forces. Yeah. And the one below the Terminator actually looks really quite unique. I haven't seen anything like that in any of the other Space Marine designs, especially for something that is sort of a loyalist design. It's not a chaos design. So well, how do you know? Well, I, 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 there's no chaos elements. In okay. Any of it. So, <laughs> All right. so um, I'm thinking it is one of uh, like good guy design. Let's just call it good guy design. Mm -hmm. Very unique. And like I said before, he looks the most like Power Rangers because Power Rangers also have that zigzag pattern on their suit. Oh, I thought you said that this one looks more like Robocop than Power Rangers. Yeah, I guess the head does feel look like a bit of a Robocop because the whole aesthetic of this one looks a lot like a cybernetic human. Even the, the power pack is very different mm -hmm. from their standard power packs. I've not seen one that looks like that before. It looks very futuristic and cyber, like cyberpunk, mm -hmm. if you will. Mm -hmm. It's not like the rest that I've seen. Okay, and, cool, cool. And uh, I would say the one that's kind of giving me the dead giveaway in terms of their cultural influence would have to be the one with the beaky helmet and the Power Rangers guy. Because with that you can see that there's a lot of use of red and gold, which is telling me that is definitely Chinese in origin because it's a very auspicious color in Chinese culture and they spot it a lot wherever they can. So gold, which is usually a texture, not a yeah, color. Yeah. You're saying that gold and red as a combination have a special significance to the Chinese. Yes, exactly. But there's also other elements here that say that it is of Chinese origin. All right. Okay, with this guy, you said that he specifically gave you a lot of clues to their origin. Yeah, so the type of gold used here is a pale polished gold, which you will see used a lot in guardian statues like the Fool Lions. Although I know that the ball elements on the pauldron are actually some sort of 
armor modification to help with quick repairs. The fact that the particular element is colored in that polished pale gold is a common design element seen as rivets in some ancient Chinese armor as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the dead giveaway had to be the Mystic Knot border designs along the trims of the pauldrons, as well as the square-like sigils all across the armor, resembling that of ancient Chinese square seals, which are still used today, that Chinese artisans will use to sign their work. Finally, as I mentioned before, usually almond design updates often lose character as they progress, but this helmet looks a lot like the beaky helmets, but they have given it some character by including this red triangular marking down the center, and that could be to accentuate the sharpness of the beak, giving it a more aerodynamic look. And with that lightning bolt on the side, does that give you any clues to Yeah, what so they are? I think lightning bolt paired with beaky helmet and sharper design must have something to do with speed. I think they must value speed a bit. Okay. All right, you really wanted to talk about the black and white armor guy. Yeah, so this Terminator armor also has a different feel to the other Legion's Terminator armors, mostly due to the use of the sigils in these ones again. So it's more on theme with what we have been seeing with the Oriental designs. Usually the other Terminators, they don't really have any sort of cultural influence. They just look like standard Terminator. But this one has a bit more of a influence from those cultural aspects like we talked about before. But the use of the leather straps and the tabard and along the pauldrons with the black and silvery white colors also makes them look a lot like some historical Chinese lamellar armor, which is a type of body armor made from small rectangular plates. You'll see them a lot in like the terracotta soldiers. Oh, okay. Because yeah. when, when I took a look at it, what I thought you were going to pick up is because the symbol to me doesn't look nearly as Chinese. It almost looks like a Celtic cross to me. Yeah, I can see that as well. It does look a bit on the Celtic side, but a lot of Oriental patterns can have that sort of formation as well. Okay, and you thought that the leather tabard sort of fit the Chinese look? Cause yes. Because I, I very much have that as a Roman thing in my head. Uh, in, in that aspect, I can see what you're saying. But it's because I have seen historical Chinese armor that's black and mm -hmm. silver, and they are usually made with these little rectangular panels mm -hmm. bit by bit. But like I said before, the sigil is what really ties that cultural aspect. Okay. Yeah. So if there was no sigils there that looked a bit like the oriental design, mm. I would not have thought that. Oh, okay. All, yeah. right. All right. Finally, this is the one guy you haven't commented on. Is there a reason for that? Well, this one looks a lot like just your standard space marine. Mm -hmm. So there was not too much that we could talk about with this. But I do find it cool that they used the thunder or lightning motif across the eye, which actually makes it look like a scar. Mm -hmm. And um, they also seem to have used the spiky pauldron pattern like they did with the Iron Warriors. So mm -hmm. that shows a little bit of the hostile design coming through there. Mm -hmm. But I also quite like that this one has the rope and tassel element as an accessory across the chest, which is also quite prominent in certain East Asian costumes or um, even Japanese ones will spot that as well. Well, it seems like this whole time you've been doing a lot of the design analysis as we've been doing the breakdown. Mm. So shall we move on to design, design analysis? analysis. Obviously, one of the biggest elements of this design is the white, but when it came to applied color psychology, one of the things that we talked about is that white is one of the most easily overpowered colors. That's right. It is the color that's easily stained. Yes. Now, the reason why that is, is because white is, of course, all of the colors in the color spectrum, but also we symbolically see white as a beginning, as the start of a journey, and black as the end of a journey. Mm. This is cross-cultural. Yes, correct. But in terms of these guys, you're saying they feel cold, empty, and distant. Well, I'm saying that that's one of white's color characteristics, and it certainly doesn't seem like they're virginal. Uh, yeah, the, that's... That's definitely not the vibes. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say that there's some other traits that come out like simple, clean and hopeful, at least in their design, the way it is to me with that gold accent, you know, the very sort of positive affect. Yeah, I totally agree with you on that. But seeing that they're space marines, they're also probably very indifferent. Yeah, there's, there's a chance, or at least when it comes to human life. <laughs> but I think we've talked about the color psychology of white enough. We should 
probably talk about red and probably about gold as well. Yes, so with red, it's one of the most powerful colors out there, just because it has the most color cross- psychology yeah, wise. You're yeah, saying, yeah, exactly. So it has the most cross cultural meaning. So all across the world, they have similar associations with red, yep. just because it's associated with the color of your blood. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And that's one of the things that people don't seem to understand about color psychology. When it comes down to color psychology, there are cross cultural things. Like there's a re- Reason why marketing departments spend so much on learning how these things work? Yeah, because they have biological responses. Like、mm. you know, when you see a combination of red, yellow, and white, it makes you feel hungry because it looks like meat. red meat, meat, and、yeah. the fat and all that sort of stuff.、Mm. So with red, it actually overpowers white's meanings a lot. And we have discussed how white is the weakest in terms of the color psychology. Yeah, yeah. And red would bring about a lot of aggression and passion into the mix.、Mm. Action, power, and violence is what red's known for, cross culturally. I mean, yes, as we mentioned earlier, and it pairs really well with gold's competence and confidence. Yeah, yeah, it's all a part of that color scheme. Yes, and we have to note that it's not a color harmony because white is not part of the color spectrum. It is all the colors together, and gold is also a texture, not a color. We'd have to look at it as a yellow. Yes, exactly, and that's why in color harmony terms, you would see only red and yellow coming through. Yeah, yeah, through more. and that would be a adjacent、uh, complementary color yes, scheme. Yes, yes. Yeah. So we know when it comes to color psychology, when you combine colors together in a color scheme, that scheme gives new meanings. Certain colors are more powerful. Certain colors give different accentuations. Can you break these color schemes down for us? As we mentioned, white is the weakest in terms of color psychology and、mm-hmm. meanings. But、yep. in this case, it helps to accentuate gold and reds ones even more.、Mm-hmm. So with red, we actually have power, action, and violence. Come and、through. the power comes through in the red as well, right? The in the red, gold, with the yeah, gold. Yes. Yeah, gold also shares the same trait of power, and in this case, white's purity actually accentuates the power. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So after that, we have cold and indifference. That would be white's meanings that comes through the、mm-hmm. most, and gold's negative traits of heartless, uncaring, and untrusting is what accentuates this part of white. Yeah, because white's known for purity, and that's a Sort of distant feeling. Yes, exactly. And then finally, with gold, confidence, charisma, and certainty are upped in terms of its priority and scale.、Mm-hmm. So that's what I would take away from this color set. Well, I think we'll have to go into the design versus law part a bit and break this down a bit more because I think some people would agree with certain parts and disagree with certain parts.、Mm. But we'll get to that. All right. In the analysis, you talked a lot about how these things work, how it had very Chinese themes. But is there anything else you can break down about this guy's look? Well, I think that we've seen a little bit of that Power Rangers aesthetic come through, and、mm-hmm. just based off of that, would be the only thing I could say that they have a very heroic essence about them. They're very in action. They're always front and center in that sort of sense. Oh, okay. You think that they're a sort of okay. Well, can you? Explain that a bit. Well, we talked about how red is also the color of action and power, and I think that does come through a lot, especially with that helmet design. I think they're just the guys that sort of come in and do the job pretty much immediately. Or, okay. Yeah. Okay. I think it's time for art. art. All right, Sunny. What does this art tell you about? This legion. Well, I think it's very interesting the type of vehicle they've got there.、It、looks like a floating motorbike. Yeah. And、um, it doesn't look entirely aerodynamic because <laughs> it, it's not pointed like it usually should be, especially for an aerial vehicle. But it still looks really smooth. And with the way he's posed, he looks like he's rushing to get somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Well, that that's usually what you do on a vehicle. And you know how we talked earlier about heroism and inaction and you know immediacy.、Mm-hmm. We also can see the color scheme of red and white in relation to emergency services like ambulance. Oh yeah, no, I didn't.、Uh, I didn't actually think about that. Yeah, so I'm guessing maybe they're those type of guys. You know, right, emergency、right. services.、Uh, maybe not ambulance. You know, medics. It could be interpreted as that way because blood for red 
and well, wiped I, for healing. I don't healing. know most medics who carry a, a big oh, so scimitar so, so, like that. <laughs> yeah, but you know, in the realm of 40k, you need to keep yourself protected even as a medic, perhaps, right? Yeah, perhaps a medic might carry a big scimitar, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, how about this one? This one doesn't look as much as the medic vibe that I got previously because there's just a, a few more of them and they're also very much in action. They're actually fighting whoever it is that they're fighting down there because a lot of it is shrouded in shadow. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking they're definitely some sort of, I would say, emergency service, but definitely not medic related. Okay, what do you mean by emergency service? Be clear on that. I think they are the type of people that you just call when it's just getting a little too hot and heavy and they just need someone on the spot to deal with things. Okay, so you're saying that they're a kind of fast response. Yeah, fast response. Okay, all right. Well, that makes a little more sense. Now for their final and most famous artwork. And of course, it's got the Primark in mm. it, but I want you to focus less on the Primark and more on the other things. Tell me what you see and what it tells you. Well, it does give me a shaman type of uh, messaging because of the way that the staff looks with the guy at the back. If let's say we're mm -hmm. not talking about the Primark, there is a lot of that Asian aspect that's coming through like we talked about before. But I think they might have something to do with mystics because of that staff, maybe. Mm -hmm. But that's pretty much the only thing I can figure out from this picture. All right. And is there anything else that you can pick up? Well, there's some, there definitely seems to be bikes in the back. So I guess, again, that's coming back to the relation of fast response and speed. Everything you show me thus far has either a bike or a sky bike related imagery. So I'm thinking, especially with how the wind is blowing and you know, white can also be seen as the element of air. I think they must be a freedom-loving uh, legion. They okay. respect freedom of others and freedom of the self. Oh, well, I'm not sure about freedom of others, but we'll, uh, we'll see. Let's move on to design, design versus, versus law. law. All right, Sunny. According to their design, what do you think their law is? I think they prioritize speed and action and freedom. So basically because of the color scheme that we have discussed that they use, mm -hmm. the type of vehicles that they use, which is also very prominent, it keeps being shown in all of their art. Mm -hmm. So I think that's something that's important to their legion's lore or at least the way they approach fighting battles. Mm -hmm. And they're very much in the thick of it. They're going to be the first response type of legion, in my opinion. Okay, and what about the cultural aspects? The cultural aspect, I am quite curious how that's going to tie into the whole aspect of how they run things. But looking at the picture with the Primark and the other uh, uh, Space Marine behind him, mm -hmm. they actually look very Mongolian. Yep. So I understand that Mongolians also have a bit of a barbaric culture in terms of the way they handle warfare. Yep. So I think that definitely comes through and gives me a little bit more context that they will be very gory in battle and they're just going to come in and slash. All right, but you said that you thought that they were Chinese. Tell me what changed your mind. Um, Originally, I thought it was Chinese, like I mentioned, with all the uh, different elements that I explained with the mystic knots and things like that. But then after seeing their facial features through that one artwork with the Primaris, as, sorry, not the Primaris, the Space Marine with his Primark, that features the hairstyle. It's all very Mongolian. So that's how I came to the conclusion that that's what they are about instead. Their yeah, origin. you're going to have to kill that bad habit of calling Primarchs Primaris. Yeah, th I that's going to upset people. You know sorry, that, right? It just kind of flows. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, how about you let Sunny know how she did with interpreting the law via the design. Yeah, leave a comment below because I do try my best to look at it and, you know, pick out all these little details, but sometimes I miss the mark a little bit on something. So let me know if well, there's something... Well, to be fair, to be fair, I mean, like, some of the times they don't communicate things with their design, so that's something that people have to take into consideration. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So let me know if I got it right and if there's anything I missed out, because that's important too. And not your deep law knowledge from somewhere else what's actually shown yeah you? so you have to remember i don't really know anything about these legions when we cover them so it's only what is shown here all right sunny are you ready to hear about the law of the white scars oh white scars are they yes that's what they're called the white scars makes sense now because one of the helmets had i remember i said that the lightning across the eye looked like a scar yes yes yeah, okay all right sunny are you ready to hear the law 
behind them. Yes. They're space Mongolians. Yes. I think I pretty much got that after a while. No, that's that's basically it. Like, I can tell you more lore, but that is basically what they are. Ah, oh, okay. Very interesting. Because I did notice something that was different from the other legions that we've talked about thus far. Remember how I kept saying that as you update the design, they slowly lose their essence and yep. characteristics and their origin designs, right? It was very interesting to see that the White Scar still retained some element of their cultural So aspects. that is one big part of them. They do fight really hard to keep their culture. Mm. And in fact, Jagatai Khan, which is their it's primer. Probably, yep, yep. Yeah. Gen- Genghis Khan. Yes, He's- yes, we follow, right? <laughs> um, he basically said, yeah, nah, to the emperor and some of his rules. He said, yeah, no, I'll, I'll fight for you and all mm-hmm. of that. But don't touch it. It's It's working. Yeah. It, it ain't broke. Yeah. Don't fix it. Yes, okay, that makes a lot of sense. Especially with that artwork you showed me where the guy had the shaman stick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I He's think... actually called a storm caller. Oh, interesting. I don't know too much about Mongolian culture. I know a little bit more about Chinese culture, but mm-hmm. Asian cultures tend to be very superstitious. And I think with a tribalistic uh, culture like uh, the Mongolians, mm-hmm. that there, there would be some level of essence where they do have some sort of shaman or mystic-like beliefs. Well, when I say that they're basically space Mongolians, if you guys know about the uh, Mongol hordes, essentially what happened with them is they integrated a lot of their opponents. They brought in people who knew what they were doing. They were very much... Warrior culture. Well, no, no. They were a merit-based culture. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's that sounds like a really good system. Yeah. So with the actual Mongolians, what they would do is when they take over a place, they bring the good people. When I say the good people, I mean the artisans, the craftsmen, and so on and so forth, and they'd bring them back to Mongolia. Oh, to add on to their, you know, uh, ranks of people who add value to society. and things. Essentially, yeah, yeah. Like, they wanted to bring all of the good things that the rest of the world had back to Mongolia. Yeah, that's fair. And the story of Temujin, the original great Khan, is basically the story of Jagatai Khan, minus the... Uh, Love without saxophone music. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not so YouTube friendly. Yeah. But the Khan is really a fan favourite because he's very well written compared to a lot of the other Primarchs. Yeah, and in what way? Okay, to give an example, right, he does give very sick burns. You want to hear one? Yeah. Okay, so you remember Fulgrim of the Emperor's Children? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's basically trying to boast and stuff. And he says to Jagatai, he says, I hear you do strange things to your bikes. And Jagatai replies, I hear you do strange things to your men. Oh, snap! (laughs) (laughs) However, one of the biggest problems I have with this Legion is there's a lot of focus on the Primark and much less focus on the actual White Scars. Mm, Okay, do you find that that's also a little bit of an issue with some of the other legions, like the Third Legion also was like that with the Emperor's Children, a lot of focus on the Primarch as well? Yeah, I would say that that is a big thing. There's, uh, they, they feel a lot more fleshed out than the White Scars. There's a lot more talk about their culture and how they do things. While there's a lot of cultural aspects to the White Scars, we don't feel them as deeply and as intensely as other legions. Yeah, I would agree with that. The first time we see them in the Horus Heresy, they're in a Dark Angel book. And the reason why we see them is they're bailing on this planet. They don't want to be there anymore. They want to go out and scout more, right? And the guy smashes a cup. He's very jubilant, very excited, very jovial. And he does have insight into these people and warns this Dark Angel guy. But you don't feel... The depth of their culture. I actually should hold up and say one thing. This isn't the first time we see them. We saw them earlier, but there we got nothing of their culture, so I don't count that. Are you trying to say that they are written as if they were a side character legion? Yeah, you know what? That really does sound like them, the way that they're sort of portrayed. And once once you get to them, you don't feel that same level as of depth that you do with some of the other legions. You're not able to fully realize their characters and what they're about in the story aspect of things. Yeah, that's okay. what I would say. Right. There's no Night Lord Omnibus which has people going crazy for them. Mm. Okay, I see what you're saying there. Okay, Cal, I think you're tripping over yourself trying to explain the lore, so let's move on to... Post-Heresy. Sonny, this is a classic artwork for the 40k 
White scars. The helmet of this armor, even as the updated design, is still unique. Normally, as I've mentioned before, as you go with the updates, they slowly become less and less characteristic. So I'm very glad to see that with this one, although it looks similar to a Primaris helmet, the mouth guard is in the shape of a narrow muzzle of a horse. Especially when you view it together with the top knot, it looks like the mane of a horse. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. no, I didn't really think about that. Yeah. And then this time, the East Asian elements are significantly reduced, aside from the daggers, which looks to be the only East Asian element retained in this design. As we have, you know, mentioned previously, it's Mongolian, so that makes sense. And then they also move towards more of a red and white color scheme with less gold accents, except for where you see them in the pauldron with the chapter, sorry, um, legion symbol and the daggers. It is actually a chapter symbol oh, a now, chapter so because uh, after after 30k, it becomes a chapter symbol. So you were oh, right. Oh, OK, OK. All right. And then something I'm noticing that's very striking is the mm -hmm. immense use of the lightning motifs. It even replaces the skull in their Aquila. So their chapter symbol is the, the skull in the Aquila. So I think that actually shows a lot of pride that they have. Like that this is how they view the Imperium. Because you said the Aquila is how the chapter or the Legion views the Imperium with the way that they change the colors and the motifs on it. Mm -hmm. So I think they think that they represent the Imperium the most with by doing so. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep, all right. Well, I think we should... Well, I got more. Okay, all right. Yes, yeah, so looking at all these things that we've mentioned, so the motifs, the strong use of color red, lightning, the horse-like helmet, it all communicates speed. So through this design, I'm understanding that this Legion prides speed above all else, which is, you know, as we've discussed earlier, that's what they are about. And mm -hmm. I do like the horse-like elements because that's how the Mongolians rode to war, you know, horse riding war band, essentially. Well, you know how you said you were worried that they lose all of their design elements? Yeah. Well, take a look at these other four. And here they are. And they ruined it. They ruined it. I should have seen this coming. Okay, why did they ruin it? It's so plain now. They took away all the cultural stuff and, you know, it looked... It looks so plain, especially okay. with all that white. All right. Well, would you like to comment on them individually? I think I can comment on all four and be done with it. Oh, okay. Well, what's the comment? They all look the same. All right. Well, let's go into them individually anyway. Okay. All right. Here's our first classic Space Marine. Yes. Although he is very bland now, I can appreciate that they have a very bold use of the lightning motif. So you can see mm -hmm. like a big chunk of it is used on the left shin. Can I say it's the left shin? Yeah. And then you have the lightning motifs that form like a cross on the knee pad. It's even on the company a symbol, which shows that it's like they're scarred. So it's a very good use of that motif like this I think it's kind of trying to show that they are priding their culture the white scar culture but you still feel that it's a lot more plain than before yes but in comparison to other legion designs with this mark of the armor like I don't know which mark the mark 5 mark whatever mm -hmm. it is actually more interesting because they are trying a little bit more with more stuff well there is something that I'll point out that you may not have noticed because uh, yeah? it's covered by the bolter you remember those daggers oh yeah oh they still have the daggers there. yeah it's just oh! covered by the bolter okay I changed my mind I changed All right. my mind Okay, you pass, Mr. Space Marine Man. And now we move on to the Primaris. Do they still pass? No, definitely <laughs> not. This by far is the worst, in my opinion, because they really have stripped everything with the Primaris designs, but it's understandable with that one. They have a different intention with the Primaris. But they got the little necklace they, they, on the uh, they knee. They do still have their little talisman. And knee lace. The knee lace. <laughs> The knee lace <laughs> is an excuse at this point, okay? It's uh, just like, okay, we throw something in there. Here you go, a knee lace. Well, you know, the one thing that I found a little odd is the purity seal. Oh, like, yeah? this was a chance to actually do something a bit more interesting, like yes. a black purity seal where... The uh, vellum is black instead of, you know, parchment-like. Why do you say black? 
because black contrasts well against white. Oh yeah, okay, okay. I will, I will agree with you on that. But I had a different idea. Oh yeah. I thought they could have used this as a chance to bring in a bit of their shaman, uh, mystic stuff. Oh and yeah. And then create a sigil that was more closer to their cultural one, like the talismans that Chinese have, which is actually yellow in color most times, which yep. would contrast well still with the white and still match with the yellow yeah, elements. Yeah, no, yeah, on like the, the the ones that they'll put on zombies, zombies so that they yeah. stop uh, moving. Yeah, about. yeah, yeah, something like that. Or yeah, no, because... that would really fit. You know what? You're right. Yeah. I think But that we might get into with the redesign. Ooh. And here's your very characterful Terminator. Yep, I would agree with that. And in this one, they actually even removed the chapter symbol from the Aquila. It's back to just a standard Aquila. Yep. Yeah, so like this one, it is really stripped down to the bare bones. It's practically naked. Yeah, well, I would say that this, I think, is one of the biggest downgrades because when I saw the black Terminators with the white scars, I'm like, ooh, what's this about? It did look very interesting. It was something I'd never really expect, and I thought it was very interesting about them, and this is just... It was very absolute. similar to the Dark Angels in that way, and I mm. think that's one of the things that we'll talk about with redesign. Okay. Finally, the Scout. Yep. He's even more naked than the previous guy. You know, you've got to stop saying naked in case uh, YouTube gets upset with <laughs> us. Yeah, but in this one, there is really nothing much. There's just the Aquila, but at least in this one, they still maintain the lightning. Well, there's lightning. the tiny charm on his bolt pistol. Yeah. It's so unnoticeable, though. I feel like they could have done a little bit more, but I think in this one, he doesn't really look Mongolian either, so he could yeah. have been... One of those people that the Khan might have brought in that's from a different culture. Well, I think this is more meant to represent the fact that, yeah, they are moving away from coming from that one planet. planet. Yeah, like, you know, they're taking in people from every other place. And he really does look very standard. But I do yeah. quite like the brown leather stuff in... Co Sorry, I should not say stuff little pockets and satchels and things mm. that is in contrast with the white. It does look quite interesting. It doesn't look very sort of army-like in the standard sort of 40k world. It does look a little bit more traditional, a little bit uh, Starship Troopery, but white. Okay. Yeah, but, you know, other than that, there's nothing much going on here. Should we move on to... Design, Design analysis. analysis. Okay, Sunny, I'm actually going to take the lead here a bit. And I'm going to say this section is going to be pretty short because I think that we both agree on one thing. They lost a lot of their character. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that statement. You know, I don't think that there's much to say. I think we pretty much said everything that we said in the design breakdown. breakdown. Yeah. yeah, I think it's more or less we're just like, okay, they lost a lot of their character. And it's like, well, why do you say that? And we just sort of here, show. Here it is. Here it is. Look at it. Look yep. at the difference. But yes, I do think that there are some things that came through, like, you know, they're expanding to other cultures. They're bringing more people into their ranks. That is being seen here and there, but they do mute it out a lot. So I could say or argue that in that perspective, it makes sense that they're more culturally muted because they're incorporating more people so they have to be more sort of equalized yeah but i don't think that it's very cool it, I don't, it's not in i the don't end. think that it really helps the rule of cool so let's move on to ah, ah this was one of the guys for the codex cover for white scars yeah he definitely represents white scars with how <laughs> scarred he looks yeah yeah and he definitely looks to look very like he's taken a big beating because yeah. like one side of his face looks quite swole and puffed up and everything so he's definitely seen a lot of action I also think that with this, if we saw these kinds of elements, like those charms along yeah. the neck, mm -hmm. I think that that would mean a lot more. Yeah, I feel like with this one, at least, like, it, it shows something as compared to the primaries where they just gave him a knee, knee lace. <laughs> knee yeah, lace, like, yeah. this one feels a bit more authentic to what we have been seeing. Yeah, and now your favourite uh, Primaris Marine artwork. Yeah, this one definitely feels very standard, like something you would see in the inner pages of a Codex book, like, yeah. I'm a space marine and I shoot people. Well, there's one other thing that you might note with it. He's got a, a head in his hand. No, there's no lightning bolt on his oh, chest. Oh, yeah. This one is like the other design that we saw where he just has the regular Aquila on mm -hmm, his chest. Mm -hmm. So this is very much like the plainest of the plain when it comes to artworks. 
Yeah. It doesn't really give us much to talk about. Well, you know, I think maybe let's do something different and mm. look at how the fans interpret it. Oh, that's a good idea too. So this is a fan art by Maurice Blodeau. I think that's how you say it. Yeah, I believe so. All right, but yeah, take a look at it. Tell us what you think. Right away, you get much more of the essence that we have been talking about with the white scars, like they're brutish and barbaric, very imposing, yep. right? And he's just coming up almost like a ghostly apparition coming to, you know, devour this enemy in front well, of him. Well, this artwork is actually called And They Shall Know Fear. Oh, I definitely feel it, the fear. Yeah, and this, I think, is going to be where we might draw some inspiration for some of the redesign element. And Moritz has done a really wonderful job of bringing all those cultural aspects in these minute and wonderful details with the belt buckle, the talismans wrapped around his arm, the horse symbol on the other one. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, and even the fur coat that he's yeah, got on yeah. the back. Yeah, so it's really nice. Like That's why I like fan art and, and it doesn't yeah. feel overdone like the Space Wolves with the fur. It yeah. doesn't feel like, oh, you know, he's wearing a horse coat. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It, it definitely shows how much understanding he has of the Mongolian culture and how they are bringing these things about. I think he yeah, might have yeah. done a little bit of research to try really push that yeah, part yeah. of the aesthetic. Yeah, and I think that... It, not only that, but it also feels very white scars in that it's a 40k artwork mm. that he just appears from nowhere. And that's kind of the whole white scars deal. They come in. I guess this is a bit of the design versus law thing. But when it comes to that artwork, I think he hits it out of the park. Yeah, definitely. Next up, we've got another artwork by... Christophe Durand de Chais. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to attempt yeah. to pronounce that name. This one looks quite standard uh, depiction of the... St- uh, the white scars, you know, he's on a bike. I, I think, like, it feels very 40K yeah. accurate, but yeah. I don't think it really gives off the vibe as much about the... White, white scars, scars themselves. themselves. In but fact, I th- think I think it might be because it's actually a three D artwork. Yeah, you can see that there's a turnaround involved, and this is wonderful because we don't get to show the sort of three D renditions of yeah. people's artwork of what they feel a legion might look like or fan art, fan work. Well, I think that the fan art here is really important because other than that cover, I feel like the white scars are really hard done by. Actually, mm. let's just skip to. Design Design versus versus law. law. All right, Sunny, once again, I'm going to take over a bit because I think that we're pretty much in agreement. When we switch to 40K, they just get blander. Yeah, they do. And I feel like they've completely lost that history with the 30K designs. And I think that the Primaris or whatever 40K versions could really use a bit more touch-up. Well, I don't think we should blame the Primaris in this Mm. case. The reason I say that is you saw the older Space Marine version of them and that was very bland too, wasn't it? Yes, I believe some of them were also quite bland, but I do think they could use a few more of those Mongolian aspects come through a little bit. Yeah, and the reason why I think that they fail on the design versus law aspect is because they very much did keep their culture there codex compliant but i mean like the thing is they've still kept a lot of their cultural aspects and i feel like it's it's almost a betrayal to them yeah because like there's still those things that that are standardized across all armies that you could bring in with the cultural thing like with the 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 purity seals Mm -hmm. it's very standard across all the legions but you could spice that bit up with a different yeah, look. Yeah, and that's that's what I'm going to bring into yeah. the redesign, but keep going. Yeah, and then you've got weapons, right? Like mm-hmm. different legions sometimes have their different sort of specialized weapons and they could or, keep or the daggers. Or just different type of swords, you know, like yeah. it, just because it's a power sword doesn't mean that it couldn't be a scimitar or yeah. a saber or whatever. Something different to yeah, match. Yeah, the culturally appropriate sword. Yeah, and it, it's just things like that. I feel that you could give it an excuse to try and keep that because the law is all about them keeping close to their Mongolian culture and then they completely just let and go of I that. don't even I don't even think that you have to have just Mongolian culture. For example, there's a lot of crossover between the Huns and the Mongolians, mm, right? Okay. And you could take aspects of that and you could take other aspects from that general yeah. region, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's a good idea. So shall we move on to redesign? redesign. Okay, one of the things that I would like to bring into it is the idea of them being horseback riders, but instead of bringing them in with horses, is giving them bows. Right, okay, that does sound more interesting. All right, the reason why I was thinking of giving them bows is the same idea 
behind the horseback riders with those uh, explosive tipped lances. Mm. But instead, they have bows and they have explosives on those. So the white scars specifically would have an additional weapon for their bikers. And say maybe within eight inches, they've got a uh, crack weapon. Mm, Very interesting. Would they still have those scimitars and things like that? Yeah, I think that's fine. But I think the main thing is, like, it it doesn't really fit with the Mongolian vibe if they've got, like, lots of scimitars. Like, that's not Mongolian. Like, the whole idea was the hit and run. Right, okay. I do think that that horse-shaped mask that I talked about should be maintained as well. Yeah, just I to think bring that, that that would be good. Yeah, yeah, because you mentioned horseback riders. I feel like that was a really big key part in one of the designs that we talked about, which should be maintained. Mm-hmm. So you're talking about more the general troops now, yeah? Yes, I would. And I think another thing that was really nice that we saw in the fan art was the fur coat. Yeah, I think that that would be really good, you know. Yeah, something like that to incorporate into it. And maybe even some more like tribalistic uh, Chinese elements like uh, dented metals or things like that. I'm not sure about the dented metals, but I definitely think stealing from the Chinese and taking that idea of the talismans Talismans, instead of the purity scrolls. Yeah, purity uh, scrolls and seals. So I like the way that uh, Moritz did it. Like They were like little bars of talismans tied around the arm. I think that one was good. That one's very Mongolian, but I'm specifically talking about the purity Purity seals seals, being replaced in that Chinese-style way. Yeah, I think that would look really interesting as well without it being sort of completely different from the rest of the legions and their sort of purity seals which yeah is very I, s- I still think it fits in i yeah. mean it still works yeah well after talking about the normal troopers i think we should talk about the terminators because mm. we both agreed that that design the black and white design from the 30k ones was almost perfect yes it w- did look a lot like some of the ancient chinese army type suits they mm-hmm. do have the black leather look for some of them but that mm-hmm. might be a very specific point in time like a different dynasty. Well, I I don't think that that really matters because I think with that, it fits the white scars. Mm, Yeah, it would be a nice contrast because they're white and then the terminators could be black. Yeah, and and it makes it more impactful. It gives it a bit more of a history and I feel like just making them white now detaches them from From, their own history. Yeah, it also detaches them from them being a special force as well if they were all looking similar. Yeah, I I don't think it's about the special force. I think it's more about the traditions of the White Scars. Now, there's another part that I wanted to talk about, how the Mongols fought, and uh, the answer is brutally. So you know how you said that they have a very heroic aspect Mm -hmm. to them? You felt that? Well, that is not the Mongols, because what they did was they rounded up uh, servant people, shall we call them. Okay. And uh, then from the local area, wherever they were assaulting, and forced them to attack the enemy. Oh, very interesting. Okay. Yeah, so I don't think that that's a good idea, but what I do think is a good idea is apparently the Khans had an amazing engineer corps. Oh, really? Okay. Yes, and I should be more specific, a siege engineer corps. Ah. So I think that the White Scars should have access to basilisks from the Imperial Guard. Mm. In fact, Imperial Guard units as an attachment sort of thing. I'm not I'm not 100% sure with how to do this, but I think that they should be more regular dudes and that shows the more human connection that the white scars have right that does sound more interesting speaking of we haven't talked about the upgrade kits and the uh character models well i think when it comes to them one of the things that's the big letdown is the upgrade sprue doesn't really feel like it gives them a lot of character yeah i do think like for example the chainsaw that they include they just i think that's cool yeah it But it feels like it's just a chainsaw that has been reshaped to look a little bit more like a Mongolian machete. I'm not going to have a... I'm not going to have a go at that, but what I am going to have a go at is I feel like a lot of those little talismans and things that they add don't feel like they have a lot of impact. Right, okay. Right, there's no reshape of the body. There's nothing which is a torso 
which changes the whole feel of that model. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get what you're saying. And we actually had a little bit of this discussion earlier and how they should just use that sort of concept and enter the 3D market. Yeah, I think that that would be really good if they just entered the 3D market specifically for upgrades, mm. right? Don't give whole models, mm, right? Mm, mm. But just give upgrades. I think I might be getting a bit too passionate here. Well, I think there's something else you could be passionate about. Oh, yeah. And what's that? Keep, Keep those, those brushes, brushes wet. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. I heard you do strange things to your ships. I heard you do strange things to your men. Uh <laughs>